Hey guys, TGCast Productions. For this G10 Live video, I have a buying customization and review for you guys for the Meibatsu Manchet Scout. This is a drip feed vehicle from the Chiropreco Heist DLC. So go ahead, as always with these videos, we're going to get on the computer here, purchase the vehicle. This vehicle can be purchased from Warstock Cash and Carry, and it retails for $225,000. So we're going to go ahead and Check it out right here that we can see it on the side there. $225,000. Let's go ahead and read the caption for the Manchester Scout. Winner of, the year's San and winner of this year's San Andreas Free Enterprise Awards, the Manchester Scout is the kind of innovation that's only possible when you convince the military industrial complex that the phrase weapons grade dirt bike is a defense contract waiting to happen. So there you go. There's the caption. It's going to purchase vehicle. You can do it. Pre-custom test drive here. Check out the customization after that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the pre-custom look for the Manchez Scout. This vehicle appears to be predominantly based off of the Armstrong MT500. And I'll go into a little bit more detail on the real life version of this vehicle towards the end of this video. But here's the pre-custom look of the Manchez Scout right here and I opened up the remote functions here in the interaction menu, of course, besides just being able to turn on the vehicle. There are going to be no remote functions. There's no doors, hood, trunk on the, any motorcycles, obviously. So just to show that there, go ahead and take this for a pre-custom test drive here. And I really like popping wheelies with this vehicle. I'll be honest, it it's, seems like a pretty good vehicle to be able to do that with. So I was doing that a little bit here. In any case... As always with this first test drive, what I try to do is I try to see if there's any like red flags, anything that really impresses me. For the most part, it didn't really pick up any red flags. And I also, I wouldn't say anything really impressed me. The vehicle seems pretty quick. Uh, the handling seems fine, but obviously, you know, a lot of times you may think like, oh, this vehicle is going to dominate in the class. And it really, you know, after further testing, it ends up not being the case. And of course, I'll go into a little bit more performance details in the final review after this vehicle is fully modified. So... I'll talk more about the performance of this vehicle a little bit later in this video. Only other thing I'll really mention here is that, as expected, you can spawn, the, if you're an MC president, you can spawn this vehicle from the interaction menu if you so choose, as well as return it to storage. All the motorcycles can do that pretty much in GTA Online as an MC president. And this is really the first bike that we received in GTA Online since the Nagasaki Strider with the Dime Casino Heist DLC, which was almost a year ago so it's been a while since we received the bike in gt online but in any case it's all I really say here for the first review here let's go and check out the customization so let's go ahead and check out the customization for the mebatsu manchez scout and i didn't mention this before but as expected, it's in the motorcycle class in GT Online, not the off-road class. Although this vehicle is more of an off-road type of vehicle, so to say. And there's a handful of options for this vehicle. In fact, there's even an old, an older Manche Manchez, or in the sense of it being an older Manchez, a, a Manchez that we received with the Bikers DLC back in 2016. It's more of a sportier version of the Manchez. This is more of a, a military grade Manchez, which I'll, I'll talk about a little bit later in this video. I will say that the Manchez we received with the Bikers DLC, it seems like we got a little bit more, possibly a little bit more customization with that vehicle than we did with this one. However, some of the options with this vehicle are really cool, and I would say bring out the real life version of this vehicle, such as adding like uh, panniers or, or panners, I'm not exactly sure how they're pronounced, certain like items on the vehicle, such as like gas tanks. Uh, or gasoline canisters, lock boxes, bags, things that you would see on like the real life version of this vehicle. As I say to this a little, you know, very shortly ago, this is based off of more of a military bike or motorcycle. So, although maybe there might be slightly less customization for this vehicle, or you know, at least in compared to maybe the Manchez, the customization that or, or the Manchester that was released with the Bikers DLC, the customization that you do get with this Manchester Scout does fit, so to say, the profile of this vehicle. And there, there is still a, a good amount of options for this vehicle. And the liveries that you get with the Manchester Scout are more military-esque 
definitely fit the theme for the real life version of this vehicle. I believe the Manchez we received with the Bikers DLC, there was more like sportier liveries for that Manchez because I would say that's more based off a, of a more sportier type of a Manchez. But that's really all I'll say for the customization. There's also a primary and secondary color for this vehicle. Uh, the, the primary color covers most of the of the motorcycle. The secondary color covers like part of the uh, body work of the vehicle or, or maybe like the framework of the vehicle, I guess you could say. Uh, you'll see, obviously, if you want to see exactly what, what the colors operate on this vehicle, I will get to that in this customization. You'll be able to see what the primary color covers on the Manchester Scout, what the secondary color covers on the Manchester Scout. And also the wheels for this vehicle are unique in the sense that you can't purchase them from the mod shop. So that's really all I'll say about that. These these wheels do seem somewhat similar to the Manchester we got with the Bikers DLC. So I'm not really sure how unique they are in the sense of like other maybe DLC motorcycles we received in the past. But nonetheless, you can't purchase these wheels from the mod shop and put them on like another motorcycle that you own. That's really all I'll say for the Manchester Scout as far as the customization is concerned. I always just like to note a few things, discuss sort of, I guess, my thoughts about the customization, what I think about it, note a few things. In any case, that's pretty much all I'll say for the customization. Feel free to check out the rest of it if you so choose. We'll get into a short showcase of this vehicle. I'll show you my final product. We'll do a final test drive. And then we'll do a final review of the vehicle and then we'll get into a little bit of the real life version of this vehicle to end off this video. So here is a 360 view of the final product of my Manchez or Meibatsu Manchez Scout here. And as far as the customization is concerned, for the primary and secondary color, I added a matte olive drab. There's no livery on the, my Manchez Scout. And then as far as modifications worth mentioning, I did add bodywork, dual support bars, exhaust, big bore exhaust, front mudguard, beveled mudguard, panniers dual storage boxes and then for the top box the storage boxes and jerry can so that's the modifications that are worth mentioning that i added to my Manchester scout and i'll li list all of them in the description so here's the final review here for the Manchester scout and really the one thing that i really like about this vehicle that i, I want to mention you sort of saw it there as i started driving is popping wheelies with this vehicle as well as even stoppies is great um, I'm not really sure as far as like a ranking of it is concerned against other motorcycles, but it pops really pops wheelies really easily. It keeps them going and even stoppies as well. This would probably be a great vehicle to use in the any of the, like the free mode events, such as like the wheelie challenge or the stoppie challenge. So that's something to consider and something I really like about this vehicle. Now, as far as the performance is concerned, handling. You know, that performance side of things for this vehicle, this motorcycle, I really didn't have any problems with. Uh, I, like I said, no red flags. I think the handling's fine. I'm sure it even handles off-road 
pretty well. I did a little bit of, I have a little bit of experience of driving this vehicle off-road, not a ton. I'm not going to try to rank it as far as other motorcycles are concerned, but it seemed to handle off-road fairly well, sort of up there with like the Sanchez, like, you know, the other dirt bikes, the man, the other Manchez as well. So that's something to take consideration. But as far as like speed is concerned, I wouldn't necessarily say this is like a speed demon. In fact, the older Manchez, and I actually compared the stats for these two vehicles because you can take both of, you can take the Manchez Scout as well as the older, or the Manchez of that with the Bikers deal. So you can take them both into races. I compared both their stats. And as far as like the speed is concerned, the Manchez has, that was added with the Bikers DLC is supposedly faster. It even has better braking. The traction is a little bit worse on it, but you know, nonetheless, it is supposedly faster than the Manchez Scout. And some to take consideration because according to Bruffy1322, who's a very reputable car me member of the community, and the site that he has, he actually ranked the Sanchez, uh, or I'm sorry, the Manchez, the one that was out of the biker DLC, number 24 out of like almost 50 motorcycles in the class as far as top speed is concerned. And I actually did a little mini test with the Man Manchez Scout against the Manchez, and the, Man the Manchez was out of the biker's DLC actually you know, was faster, and according to the stats, we should expect that, was faster than the Manchester Scout. So taking this into consideration, you know, there's probably going to be a lot of motorcycles that are going to beat the Manchester Scout. I mean, you also got to take consideration, like, the juggernaut, so to say, or the, or the, you know, the top dogs of the motorcycle class. It's like the Batty, the Shataro, the Hakuju Drag. There's going to be a ton of motorcycles that are going to beat, probably beat this vehicle out as far as speed is concerned. You know, so that's just something to take consideration. Again, the handling I had no issues with. I think it handles fine. But as far as like a competitive, competitive performance is concerned and like speed, I don't think this vehicle is necessarily going to be the pick there. So that's just something to take consideration. Something else I'll mention here really quickly I thought was interesting is the icon for this vehicle actually is a motorcycle icon on the map. That you can see not all motorcycles have this icon. So that is pretty cool. So I just figured I'd mention that because it is a little bit more unique to just certain, I guess, motorcycles in GT Online. Now, finally, this video, as always and as promised, we're going to go into a little bit of some brief details about the real-life version of the Meibatsu Manchester Scout. Now, I mentioned earlier in this video that I say that the Manchester Scout appeared to be based off the Armstrong MT500. There actually may be one or two other models that this motorcycle actually might be somewhat modeled after. Now, as far as the Armstrong, Armstrong MT500 is concerned, it was produced by a, actually a UK car manufacturing company based out of Bolton, England. And it was known as the Armstrong CCM or Armstrong Clues Competition Machines because I believe one of the founders or the main founder of that company was Alan Clues and that was in 1980. They actually be began producing the MT500 in the mid to late 80s into the early 90s. In fact, they ended up actually selling, I believe, the, the motorcycle production um, or, or these vehicles, or I guess the rights to these vehicles, whatever you want to sort of label it as, to Harley Davidson in the late to early 90s. And actually in the early 90s, there ended up being another version of sort of this type of uh, Armstrong MT500 being produced, the, the Armstrong MT350. It's a similar model with certain differences such as having an electric uh, i guess uh, ignition starter as well as like an improved carburetor things like that there, there's a number of other improvements or i guess changes to the mt350 but again it wasn't in the hands of armstrong ccm any anymore it would have been the hands of harley davidson i believe the 350 went into the early 2000s or like around 2000 2001 and these were service vehicles. That's something to keep in mind. The military used these. These were meant for the, the UK Army as well as, I believe, some like Canadian, Jordanian forces. But yes, this, is meant to, this was meant to be a service or military vehicle. Now, another potential vehicle that this that the Manchester Scout may be based off of is actually the Kawasaki KLR 250, which actually the US military used this vehicle for some time, I believe, in like the early 2000s. Uh, maybe even a little bit before that. But what I find somewhat interesting is that, and that maybe I'm not understanding something fully here, but it's interesting how the U.S. Army decided to use a foreign-made motorcycle. And we have, you know, like the U.K., Canadian, Jordanian forces using Harley-Davidson. 
uh, manufacture bikes, at least uh, when they receive the rights to like the MT500, MT350, because Harley Davidson is supposed, to, you know, supposedly American made motorcycles. Maybe not necessarily all the parts are manufactured in America, but nonetheless, the bikes are supposed to be. So that's just something I found somewhat interesting. But in any case, the Kawasaki KL. R250 may potentially be another motorcycle that the Manchester Scout is based off of. Now, all in all, I'm, I believe the MT500, MT350, as well as the Kawasaki KLR250 are no longer in use anymore as far as service is concerned or in the military. But nonetheless, it is very cool that, you know, as far as like the customization is concerned for the Manchester Scout, you can really make this vehicle look like those service vehicles because again this vehicle is was meant for the military not really for civilian civilian use in fact i don't even really know what the price was for these vehicles or you know how that all worked as far as what the government maybe had to pay for these vehicles for military use i don't even know how difficult it would be to get your hands on one of these where well, you'd have to pay for it but nonetheless this vehicle was meant for military use and i like that rockstar sort of implemented that in the game and brought out the realism of the Manchester Scouter what this vehicle is based off of in real life. But in any case, guys, that's pretty much everything I have to present to you in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it beneficial. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video. Be sure to comment if you have any questions. And as always, have a great day.